The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Terramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Terramina, blogger of Around the OAA, um, one of the hosts of Last Three Brain Cells, and the host of Between Terramina's and OAA Neighborhood Television. Look, like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud, watching on YouTube, and also those watching on Ori Neighborhood Television. Yes. We got we finally got you back here. Ian, you're back I, after I, after like a month of It's been longer than a month. I know it's been longer it's than crazy. a month. It's crazy. So you want an update of what's been going down? We've I know we've had a lot of basketball. We've had a lot of district stuff being announced yeah. and all that. I mean like There's been so much going on. I I feel like um like pre show we we're chatting. Um I have no idea what's going on. Uh things here at on TV are crazy. Uh, my household had a bout of COVID yep. for like four weeks, which was great. So much fun. It's still here. Be safe, everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't so bad. We recovered. We're good, right? Mm-hmm. But there you go, right? And then uh, the end of the school year. I mean, that's that was a while ago. Right. Um, that, well, you know, that felt like a month a, ago. a long time ago. Mm-hmm. And so we're dealing with all that and some other things. So, yeah, finally, I can come and sit in the seat. I'm all caught up. It took a month. And some change, <laughs> and we're and here we are. So I, I'm I think coming back at this time is the best time to come back. You know, we're thirty right? days from the start of football. Yes, so. yes, because we're excited. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been listening to some of you know portions. I was excited about you having Coach Line on last, last week. week. Yep, and that was that was a great uh, great get, great guy, great interview. Um, didn't give you a lot of information, right? Well, I Very think we, close I to think the we're gonna break. I think we're going to break that down because <laughs> I really want to break Oxford down a little bit. Because I'm excited for Oxford. Be, I'm a little You're scared worried, about him. I'm, I'm, I'm worried about them. I know, but we saw what Coach did. Yeah, right? when you look at what they – well, here's the thing. With Oxford last year, that team started off 0-3, but they had a lot of experience, a lot of talent. Yeah. You know? To start on one three is and very brutal. It and is then they daunting. turned it around going five and one their last six games, including a big winning at Chippewa Valley to make the playoffs. Yes. Um and then what they did to Clarkston behind four touchdowns and two hundred and thirty five yards from Salvacaro. Um but when I look at this team this year, you know, we know what Oscar, changes, right? I mean, there's every a year lot of changes yeah. with them. I mean, they gotta get a new quarterback in there. They're replacing a lot of talent. I mean, so there's a lot that Coach Jack Lyon has to go through this year. Yep. A lot. And then you add the emotional component, you know, which that's going to, um, you know, the question for me with Oxford is, you know, you know, you know that this is going to be an emotionally drained season for them. It could be an emotional season for them. Yeah, I don't know if it would be uh, emotionally draining, but it could be emotionally inspiring. That's what I was trying to say. Right? My okay. Bad. Okay. No, that's fine. Well, because, to say my bad. you know, because uh, they're, they're fighting for things. Right. Right? And we know what. Mm-hmm. And I think they got the they got the right guy running the ship. Right. And you know they're going to be ready. Right. He's a grad. He played there. Yeah. He knows the community. Mm-hmm. Right? Deep ties. So you I look have, at that schedule. It is not friendly. No, again. But we said that last year. Uh-huh. And... They still got to play it. They got Romeo and the yes. Chippewa Valley. Both of them are going to be on the road this year for them. And then you have Groves on there. Um, yep. And then Bloomby Hills is the other crossover. And Bloomby Hills, we know. But for me, Bloomby Hills has got a lot to prove, in my opinion. Um, but back to Oxford. Yes. Um, I think when you look at this team, and I looked at this team before the season started, and I, and I know I sent you my projections and all that for the season. Mm-hmm. Um. Which are still on the DL. Yeah, still on the it's DL. So quiet. <laughs> it's, I mean, like, but when well, I look so at that schedule. You're, you're going to bring that out uh, during the. Yeah, during the preview show. During I'm the pre- bring that preview out show, which is coming up because we have next week is the uh, uh, football media, media day. Media day start next week, Which yes. is exciting. Yes. So. I mean, this is what it's going to. I think when I look at Oxford, and I think the thing with them is that schedule is absolutely vicious. Yeah. I mean, they got to go to Clarkson. They have Lake Orion. They have Lake they Orion at home. home. They have. They have to go to the swamp. They have to 
They have Adams now on that schedule. Yes. I mean, Adams, let's not forget, they beat them twice last year. And we and I talked to Coach Lyon specifically about Adams' veer offense. And we know with Adams, you know, when you look at them, they're fresh off of making a Division One state championship appearance. Yes. But they got questions, especially up front. I mean, they got the skill players, you know. In me, you know, Veer, you can have skill players, but you got to have the line. And they got questions up front. Yes. And depth a big Because they had – a that team last year was amazing. Yes. The senior leadership on that team was amazing. Mm-hmm. And they're gone, just like everybody else, right? You got seniors that are gone. And there and wasn't a lot of depth on that and, team in that no, program last year. No. There wasn't a lot of depth. So and, and it, and it showed concern. late. Like, you got some injuries. Uh, that's it. You know, you have issues. Well, the Alex Clerk injury was a big injury last year Huge. in that state final game. Huge. I mean, like, because he could pressure on both sides the ball, you know, in that game against Belleville. If, yeah. if he stayed that whole game, he played the whole game, that's a different outcome. It is. I mean... And then you look at, obviously, when you look at another team I'm curious to see, um, West Bloomfield. People look at them. Yeah, new, uh, new. is it going to be a new look? I know in-house. Well, I know it's Therese Grice. Is, he coached last yeah. year. Um, but I know that when but you look at, they do have. Who do they, they lose? Who do they get back? They got Raekwon Nance back at quarterback. You got Kenny Jones at running back. They did lose Dylan Tatum. Um. I mean, they got several good. I mean, they got Samaj Morgan at wide receiver. Um, but they, what have we seen with coaching regimes that change or coaching mm-hmm. staffs that change? Even in house, mm-hmm. we saw it at Lake Orion, a year of success, and then and then yeah, you it, might have a drop have off a drop because off you start bit. changing things. So here's the problem: I don't see much of a drop off with this movie this year. I, I just don't see it. Okay. Um, the reason why is because yes, they got Curry Jackson coming back from IMG Academy. Oh. Um, he transferred back to West Bloomfield. But the problem I have with West Bloomfield, and I talked about this with um, Ken Jones' father a couple last year. Okay. I said, your biggest problem <laughs> is going to be discipline because you have all the pieces. They have all the pieces to make a state title run. But what's going to beat them is their discipline, their mental mindset, their discipline. I mean, when I saw the match against Novi, they were just undisciplined. If they can clean up the discipline, I think this team's got a great chance to get to Ford Field. I really do. I mean, they don't make dumb mistakes. You don't make dumb penalties. You don't make stupid extracurricular activities after plays. Yeah. Or you do that. And that kills every I, team yes. at every level. Mm-hmm. And it kills every team at every level. So yeah. if, um, and I know we have a lot of Lakers who listen to this podcast. <laughs> so. That is my big concern. I have West Bloomfield, you know, and I'm hoping to address Coach Grice's at Media Day. Is how is the dis- how is the mental mindset for you guys? I know that you guys are, you know, that's the big question. I have West Bloomfield is going to be the discipline. If they can address that, um, I think you're going to be a very good team. I mean, yeah. I think there was some fundamental pieces last year. I mean, like I thought personally, and this is my own opinion, I thought Kenny Jones was a better Wildcat quarterback than Dylan Tatum was. I really do, and that's just my honest opinion. I think yeah. I think Kenny but Jones, the, but but they're also a year older, yes. right? And maturing, mm-hmm. and and a lot of uh, you know talking about discipline and different things that has to do with maturity. I mean, these are still high school kids, mm-hmm. um, and we we saw it with different teams throughout the years. Of hey, they're loaded with talent, but the discipline goes out the door at certain pine, times. When you run into some adversity, mm-hmm. you know, you go down early. Can you just stick to the game plan, keep focus? And if you can't, we've seen teams go off the rails. You know what? Bloomfield's two losses last year were just Adams last year. Yeah. You know, they beat Clarkson. And, and was Adams a disciplined team? Adams, yeah. Well, you know what? Yes. When you run a veer, when you run a veer, you know what I mean? That's a time possession of offense. You know what I yes. mean? So, but you're not making silly penalties. You're no. not doing stuff at you keep the ball in your hands, keep and you are disciplined. Yep, and that's where I think if West Bloomfield can address their discipline this year, I think they're going to be a good team. I really do. Yeah. Um, when I look at the rest of the rest of the red, and I think you know when you look at you look at Stony Creek, obviously they're a team that's cur- I'm curious to see this year. Yeah, me too. Um, they got John Fogler quarterback. They got um, they got a couple good pieces coming back. But when you look, and I'm going to have Stony Creek coach Nick Merlo 
calling calling in next week when he um when he's up in the beautiful upper position uh, above the bridge above the north bridge. of the bridge north of the bridge yeah and uh you know i know the listeners don't tune in for my uh hollow opinions on this show <laughs> but I'll, i'm here this week but i'll be gone for a, mm-hmm. for two then i'm back yes uh to get ready to kick off the season so when i look at stony when i look at stony creek this year this is a bit interesting year for them because being in the red you know yeah. last year they were the first team that to make the playoffs last year yes I mean, so there's got to be a lot to prove with Stony Creek. I mean, I think they're going to be okay this year. Yeah, well, we've seen them over the years. It's like some teams have really steep drop-offs, you know, after having a loaded senior Two class. Two years ago, they had a great year. Unbelievable, right? Mm-hmm. So, th- again, this is the whole – the things that you've talked about numerous times. So, how are the feeder programs over there? Are they feeding kids in to replace, um, you know, do you have those sophomores and juniors? Are they ready to be leaders? Are they ready to step up? Do you have freshmen that are going to jump up into the sophomore ranks that are mm-hmm. going to come into the varsity level that are going to support Stoney and that team? Is Do they have the bodies? That's the question. And, you know, you talked to Coach Line in Oxford, not to circle back around to Oxford again, but about the feeder programs and getting uniform and – making sure everybody's on the same page, right? All these teams go through those situations. Yeah, and everybody does. I right? mean, and like, some, some, some of these teams run into issues where they don't have right. the, the numbers, and what do you do? What do you do? And that's a big question I have with Stony Creek. I mean, like, obviously you have Hart Middle School there right next door. Um, you know, so I'm very curious to see how Coach Merlo's team is going to look this year. Are you scouting the middle school teams going, hmm, future talent, hmm? Well, you got you to look <laughs> at that. You got to look at the youth programs as well, you know yeah. what I mean, obviously. Now, a team I'm curious to see is Clarkston. People look at Coach Justin. New era. New era. Justin Pinter takes over. Um, Obviously, you know, I thought there would be a quarterback controversy, but on the um, on a different podcast, um. Coach John Pintar went and uh, named Mike Helm a starting quarterback. Okay, so he knows. So he knows his wow. starter. Um, you got Ethan Clark coming back at running back. And then, of course, Monster. you have Cole Jarvis at wide receiver. Now, here's where I think is going to be the question mark for me. I don't have – I don't know if I can trust this defense because that defense, I mean, yes, they got a lot of a – lot of, Nice players on that team. You got Desmond Steffens. You got Kavanaugh Dighton. You got Jalen Wilson. Um, you know, and you got Cole Dillinger leading both offensive and defensive lines. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is the unit where I, and you got, Nick, I think Nick Wojcicki, I think gets the name. But I don't trust his defense one bit. <laughs> I mean, ever since 2019, you know, when that year that defense was had a really rough year. I mean, yeah. And then like, like surprising, surprisingly bad year. Mm-hmm. And then they were a little bit better in 2020 and then 2021, you know, they turned things around a little bit, but then you look at that Oxford game and you look at, they gave up 38 points. You gave up four touchdowns to Salva Carl. Yeah. I mean, you let Brady Carpenter have a game. Mm-hmm. He had a nice game. I mean, Tate Murray even had a nice game in that game against Clarks. That's a lot of points. Yeah. I mean, and, for the traditional Clarkston style defense. Well, and then uh, even in the year when they lost the Grand Blank, when they gave up, I mean, they gave up o- almost uh, uh, over 35. I mean, yeah. like, so when you look at Clarkston, you know, defense, this is where I think they're going to have the biggest problems. And, I, and when I look at Clarkston, yes, they got the experience, but defensively, I still don't know if I can trust this team defensively. Yeah, I mean that's the big question. Offensively, I think they're going to score points. I mean, Ethan Clark, I think do for, I think he's going to have a big year. Now the schedule is favorable for them. I mean, they have they have to play Davidson at Michigan to start the year. Oh, they're going back. They're going back. To, they're playing Davidson at Michigan. Then they have their they have only three home games this year. Oh, because of the Michigan game. Well, is the Michigan game a home game? Was Davidson supposed to be home? Uh, Davidson's yeah, Davidson's wearing red this year. They're going to be wearing red. Clark's wearing white. Um, but I'm like, if they only have three home home games, one of those games, usually those early Clarkson season. Clarkson last year wore blue at Michigan. Really? Yeah. So hmm. they're wearing. So yeah. they were the home team. Yeah. So Davison's going to be wearing red this year. So which team are they? What game are they missing? 
Um, they they play Lapeer Week Eight. That's on the road. Um, they play three home games. They had three home games. How was that even a thing? I don't know how that's possible. I mean, they got to go back to West Bloomfield, which is very odd. I mean, last what? year they went to West Bloomfield. I mean, what is going on with this scheduling? I don't know. I mean, they got to go to Oak Park. They got to go to Lapeer. They got to go to um. They got to go to Adams. They got to go oh. to Lake Ori. I mean, like, you know, and then you got then you got Davis at the Big House. Um, but you have Southfield Arts and Tech at home. So, uh, yeah, when, Stony Creek so when they saw Oxford the home. schedule, they got one of these. Well, that's not it. <laughs> oh, I thought it was. Oh, here's this. Here's the schedule. You stink. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much. If wow. yeah, I was I'm like, what are you doing? Saxophone. It's supposed to say ah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Uh, that was smart. Yeah, mm-hmm. who scheduled that? I don't know who scheduled that. I mean, like. Wow. Wow. And, and for the fans. Uh, so. Clark's going to be wearing white a lot this year. Yes. They're going to wear white a lot. And for the fans, for the fans to only have three home games. That's insane. Yeah. Only have three home games. But your sub RC teams are going to be. But your sub RC teams are going to be. Um. At home, I mean, like at home a lot, you know. I mean, the freshmen play at, at the junior high, then they are yeah. JV or at high school. But, but you know, it is what it is. That th- so <sighs> the scheduling makers not friendly to Clarkson. No, um, I mean we saw Lake Orion run into that a couple of years when they used to play down at Wayne State and mm-hmm. that sort of thing. I think they even played at uh, U of M once, didn't they? Speaking of Lake Orion, they yeah. got a very tough schedule this year. I mean, you got Utica Eisenhower. And a new coach. New coach, familiar coach, though, and Coach Chris Bell. Familiar, but he's it's a new coach. But when you look at Lake Orion, they gotta play at they gotta play home with Celine. And then they gotta play Utica Eisenhower on the road to open and up. Celine's the, the last and that's the last game. And that's not counting a trip to West Bloomfield. Yes. They gotta go to Oxford. You got Clarkson at home. Or homecoming. I mean, yeah, and I'm going like, what are you doing? <laughs> I know. That to me, when you when you book Clarks for your homecoming, I was going like, what are you I doing? I know, I know. I mean I, I is that the first time? No. I think it's the second time that Clarkson's homecoming. It's been a it, and it was not a pretty game last, no, the last time those two teams. It played. wasn't. No, it wasn't. It was it was ugly, but But if you're like Ori, you <laughs> gave up over fifty points to your two arch rivals last. Yeah. If that's not motivation enough, I don't know what is. I mean, you know, under Coach Bell, that I, I expect some different things with Lake Orion. I I mean, I, you know the offense is going to change. You know, yes. the question for me is his defense. I think if the defense can find a way to, you know what I mean? But the defense has been a issue for for the last two years. Easy. It, it was leaky when Bell left his last season. It was kind of what's going on, and then it just kind of continued. Well, the on. defense in 2019 was very good. I thought the yeah de- they did bounce back. I said, but that was a great senior class, right? Great senior class, right? I mean, you had all these fantastic players in all the key positions, right? And they held strong, right? And then, injuries were and low, kind of, and during the pandemic year, kind of a little bit of a step back, and then yeah, last year, you know what I mean? This defense really, really struggled. Yes. Um. So offense started clicking. Offense. Um. When they changed to a wing T, I really thought that you know, I didn't really think that the wing T would work with this group mm. last year. Um. But I think going back to the traditional Coach Bell offense, I think it's going to really help this group out. But, again, we've seen Bell offenses being spread in a way. Right. And when they were, what did they have? Large, Large, tall, tall. large offensive line, push you around, tall receivers – Mm-hmm. That could and a and a quarterback who could deliver the ball. Right, and I think with Lake Orion, that's the big question: is just quarterback. I mean, who's going to be the guy starting center? Yes. I will be very curious to see how the Lake Orion preview show goes. I'm very curious to see how Lake Orion responds at media day. So, yeah, I think you but know, Bell's not going to. So, Bell is a completely different animal than Blackstock. Yes, yes. He He's very close to the vest. Yep. He's a traditional type of guy, yep. old school. Old school, yeah. And we've already seen that, you know, scheduling the, the show to get the preview going. Yep. Uh, 
right? So we know, we go, hey, it's Bell. It is Bell back. Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. You know, so we kind of know what to expect, but it's the personnel and yeah, that's molding what, that personnel that's what it into comes down the to. image of what he that's wants That's what to it have. comes down to. And I think that's for Lake Orion. I think that's going to be, and who knows? Lake Orion's in a, I think Lake Orion's in a really nice spot. I you mean, think not so? being, not being known as by the media, not being like, um, you know, like by the, um, like the Detroit area media. You know yeah, what I yeah. Mean? But I think, you know, you got Oxford's getting a lot of love. I mean, Oxford's getting some love. Clarkson's getting a lot of love. West Bloomfield's getting a lot of love. Yeah. Here's Lake Orion. You know, they don't really, I mean, I think Lake Orion, they got some good players on that team. They got some good players. Um, So I'm curious to see what the Dragons do this yeah. year. Um, Let's go now from the red to the white. If there's one team <laughs> I, I cannot trust this year, it's A&T. Because here's why. Offensively, they got all the all the tools. Yes, all the pieces: quarterback, wide receivers, the RPO. Um, but it's funny because you know what their last four games they allowed defensively was fifty nine points a game. Yeah, it, that was bad. Yes, they gave up forty five to Rouge la- Rouge last year. They gave up. They gave up. I think over fifty to Oxford, and then they gave up over. 40 to Sony. I mean, like, I mean, like, they were not the same team since that Lake Orion game last year. And no, not at all. Especially in defense side of the football. I mean, defensively, they allowed last year, they allowed 39, 38 points a game last year. That's yeah. rough. Yeah. And that goes, A&T is another one of those, uh, I want to say a disciplined team, but it's kind of one of those teams where if they get down early, they kind of just, I'm not going to say they folded. But I mean, they love it, shootouts. They do, they do. I mean, because they can put points up. Right. We know that. Right. But that's a. It's not a winning uh, proposition to get in a ton of shootouts with people. You ha- defense wins the championship. Yeah, defense right? wins championships. And when I look at Coach Aaron Marshall's yeah. team, defensively, you know, it's and you look at that schedule this year. You got they got to play Detroit Cast Tech to open the year up. Tough. Then they close out there at Rouge. And uh-huh. your crossovers are Clarkson and West Bloomfield. <laughs> oh my! And yeah. then that's not counting uh-huh. the white schedule when you got to play teams like Bloomfield Hills. Harper Woods is on there. I mean, like yeah. Rochester's on there. It's absolutely and Groves is on there. That's absolutely brutal. Yeah, it's a it's it's a full schedule. Yeah. And when you look at A and T, obviously you got Isaiah Marshall quarterback. Um, but. I'm not worried about the offensive side of the ball as much no. as you got to worry about the defensive side of the yes. ball. Yes. Um, and then when you look at Harper Woods, who's coming into the league, they got the weapon, they got the linemen, they got the playmakers. Now you got to find quarterback and um, a running back. You know, last year, obviously, they're two, but I mean, they're two top guys graduated last year. When you look at, you know, I mean, so when you look at Harper Woods, you know, they're coming in the league. And this is, this is their year first one, year one. Right? Yeah. So when you look at Harper and we've Woods, seen teams come in year one into the OAA go, what is this? Mm-hmm. We saw it happen to Oxford years ago. Yes. And you think, they came in going, we're going to take this. And you what? see it happening to Coach Rob Old and his team is what are we getting ourselves into? Now, what helps Harper Woods, they open up the year with their arch, with, with, with one of their arch rivals, Harper Woods Chandler Park Academy. Um, they close out the year at Roseville. Roseville is an improved team. So when I look at Harper Woods, there's some questions, especially at quarterback and running back, who are going to be those two top guys? That's a big question with Harper Woods. Do you feel with them that, I mean, traditionally, you know, they're a tough team. They're a tough out, right? They always have been. Mm -hmm. But do you think the whole script has to be thrown out? You can't. There's no assumptions we can make about this team coming into the OAA. None. Because it is a completely different beast. It's a complete, yeah, the OAA is a complete different beast compared to the independents. Now, Harper Woods has played a tough right. schedule. I mean, they, yes. played, they yeah. played the likes of Davidson. They played they good played teams. Notre Dame Prep. Yes. I mean, they played some really good teams. Yes. I mean, last year they, they went to overtime River Rouge. So when you look at it, I think Harper Woods, you know, I'm curious to see how they adjust to the league. But I'm very curious to see, can they find a quarterback? Can they find a running back? That's the big yeah. question for Coach Rob Bolton's team. Now, a team I'm really pleased with their stepping up is Bloomby Hills. Last year, we talked about Bloomby Hills. Yes. 
And remember the blog article I wrote about Bloomby? I compared the Blackhawks schedule to the Kansas Jayhawks in 2007, <laughs> which is basically what Kansas, if you want to know what the Kansas Jayhawks in 2007 was, was they went the number two in the country, but they played nobody, nobody until they played Missouri. And then they played Missouri, lost a good game, I mean, and then when they got into the postseason, things fell off. Yeah. Last year, when I looked at that, that to me described Bloopy Hills last year. Now, with them, they got TJ Jackson back at quarterback. You're in a division where it's going to be tougher. You've already toughened up your non conference. Um, how much do you think the article that I wrote and. <laughs> Playing Novi Detroit Catholic Central in the first round really helped this program out this season. Your article, you think they have it tacked on the wall? Go I don't on. know if they have it tacked <laughs> on the wall or not. I don't think so, Sammy. Um, I mean, observations are observations. We have fun with it. That's why we do this, right? We sit and talk, and mm-hmm. that, that's what makes it fun. That's why we love love football, love football, and these th- this show, and you know, that's why the listeners tune in. We have a good time. Um, I was – I don't know what it is with that team, but I cannot – it's hard for me to get behind them because – uh, to or to say, oh, yeah, they're the front runner now. Or, yeah, I have full faith that they're going to come in and take care of business. I, I Even last year, I didn't really have that I mean, look at feeling, their schedule it, last year. They were in the blue division. They played water for Kettering as their non-league. That's not a – that's not Ket- a – Kettering is not a power. No, they're not. No, and – you know, uh, but yeah, it's it's hard to get behind that team. But hey, if you're winning, you're winning, right? I mean, we've seen other teams do it too. And you go, and if they're you're coming up the non conference, they play Seahome to open up. That's a tough game going against a team that runs a veer. It's a different schedule this year. Yeah, much <laughs> different schedule. I think, I yeah, think Blue so, Bay Hills will be better. I really I, I, do. I don't, maybe the OAA read your article and said, oh, we need to change their schedule. You know, it, but it's but it's one of those things where the variables change year to year. We know this from mm-hmm. personnel to everything else to. to it, it, especially in high school, it's so different from year to year, mm-hmm. and that's why it makes like West Bloomfield, Clarkston's, you know, those those teams like that, um, so impressive is that they can sustain success for so mm-hmm. long, year after year after year after year. That's the question, right? So going back to the question is, they're gonna have a hard time. You think they're gonna have a hard time? They're gonna have a hard time. Let, let, let's say, um, because they got Groves has been proven tough. Rochester's been uh, proven. Um, can Rochester repeat what they did, though? That's the Is big that question. a one I mean, they were 11 and 5 the last two years. Yes. I mean, but they didn't make the playoffs last year. Shocking. So when you look at Rochester, well, Rochester's problem is they haven't been able to beat their city rivals. Yes. Stony Creek is now be starting to become a problem for them. Yes. I mean, Adams, we know they haven't beaten them since 1996. And I don't know they if They beat I'd... Stony, they're in last year. Yeah, they beat Stony. They're in. I agree. With Couldn't you. do it. I agree with you. I agree with you. They beat Stony. They're in. For me, with Rochester, it's coming down to beating the city rivals. Yeah, I you, mean, you have to go. You have to split them at least. Yeah, you have to split them at least, and I think that's the that's what I see at Rochester. If you coach Eric Vernon, you have to beat your city rivals. Yeah, and I'm going to ask that media day. You have to beat your city rivals. Oh, you're not going to ask them why haven't you beaten your why? city? <laughs> well, I I think I know the if I you think guys, I know the answer. I'll say this, uh, listeners to the podcast: if you haven't seen Sammy in action at Media Day, he's one of the most fearless guys to ask a question of a coach that I've ever seen. There's a couple times over the years you've asked the, asked some questions that in editing we're like, what? <laughs> you know, you ask that? You know, but but I think the coaches appreciate it, right? Why did you give up 50 points a game? Yeah. You know, uh, you know, and they, they shake their head. They go, you're right. We can't hide. And he you can't argue stacks. You can't, it, you there, can't argue numbers. It is you can't hard. Argue numbers. It is hard numbers on paper. Mm-hmm. And then when I look but, at, and then when I look at <laughs> Oak Park, you know what I mean? Yeah, a lot, what are we looking at Oak a Park? lot of people at Oak Park, you know, yeah, they're young. Bouncing I mean, like, back. I mean, like last year they had a really rough year. They did. And then you look at that schedule this year. I mean, you know, coach Greg Carter likes to play tough. And he uh, loves your questions. Yes, he does. <laughs> and then the fact that they finally they picked up a week eight, they got Orchard Lake St. Mary's on the road, on the red turf. Oh, boy. Yeah. Adam's got to play in week one. <laughs> That's, those are tough matchups. I mean, like, so when you look at Oak Park, I mean, like, you know, I'm curious to see how their depth is going to be. Curious to see 
how is their defense going to look? They got a good running game. I mean, I really like the run, rushing attack, but there's a lot of questions with Oak Park. Yeah. A lot of questions. So I'm very curious to see. But I've heard the pundits say, well, Oak Park's supposed to be better this year. They I mean, you got to show me it. They got to show me. Yeah, because we've heard it before. Heard it before. Right? Heard it before. And we've seen teams mm-hmm. We've seen teams from Oak Park who are loaded with talent, and mm-hmm. you're going, what happened? Yeah. What's going on? Mm-hmm. So, you know, a lot of it goes, it's it's between the ears. You know, confidence, do they feel confident, you know, and ready to go? And like you said, Car- Coach, Coach, Coach Carter. he knows what he's doing. Yep. And it's just a matter of the kids mm-hmm. responding, mm-hmm. just like every other coach. And now the question here comes for Groves. And I want to yeah, talk Groves interesting. a little bit. I mean, like, um, when I look at Groves this year, people say, okay, here's a team that's got some questions. Um, the Falcons, last season, very disappointed with them last year. Lost their beloved Dreadnoughts last year at Wayne State. Go Dreads, go. Um, and then they <laughs> they had, it was rough for It was very unusual for them. I mean, yes, they started a freshman quarterback in Kane Hardy. Um People have asked me about Groves. They said they look solid at 7-on-7. Seven seven, but I'm saying, well, 7-on-7, seven seven, you know what I mean? That, to me, is this, you know, you can look good at 7-on-7, seven seven, but it doesn't it doesn't get you prepared for the season. Yes, and you're not playing 7-on-7 seven seven no. when it really matters. You're playing 11-on-11, 11 11 <laughs> and you have 11 defensive guys coming after the quarterback. Um, So I'm curious to see how – Groves' experiences this year. I mean, like, I'm curious to see how that they are going to be this year. I mean, like, being in the white, it's going to be interesting. Um, curious to see how Groves does this year. Yeah. Um, let's go to a division where I think there's a lot more parity. The blue. There is so much parity in this Wasn't division. that the case last year, too? This is a wholly new blue. Oh, oh, that's right, because we have four, four divisions. divisions. Yes. So... In this division, we have Troy, right. Troy, Athens, um, North Farmington, Farmington, and Seaholm. And Ooh. I talked, and this is a good division. It I is. Mean, it's a parity division, I call it. Yeah. It's... I mean, I talked to Coach Albrecht at Farmington a couple weeks ago. I I don't. I think you listened to it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I got a, a couple uh, couple minutes in. Yeah. Yeah. So when I look at Farmington, everything starts with them. It starts with Dominic Pesci. It starts with them. I talked to Coach Albright, and he's very excited about this team. Very excited. Now, the only concern I have, you know what I mean, Farmington, I think Farmington could do very well here. I mean, last year, they won four straight games to close out the year at the start of 5 Very strong at the end. Very strong at the end. Yep. I mean, yes, they lose their running back in Jacob Sanders. He's gone, graduated. Um, But when I look at Farmington, People say to me, could this be the year they get the Farmington Cup back for North Farmington? It could be. They got North Farmington at home. North Farmington's not the same team they used to be. I mean, last year, I mean, like, yes, they had some good wins early, but then really struggled at the end of the year. Something happened, yeah. I mean, North, yes, they got Ryan Shelby back at quarterback. They got Rashawn Matthews at running back, but the line's a question. Wide receivers are a question. Um... Depth's a big question for North. And then on Farmington's part, you know, couldn't they have the mental stamina to beat North? That's the big question. I think Farmington's going to have a great year. I really do. North, I don't know. But North's got a very tough schedule. I mean, they got to play um, Caledonia this year. Oh, boy. Isn't that At fun? home or on the road? That's at home, though. Okay. But they got a lot of games at Ron Holland Field, but they got to play Lake Orion as well in that. And they got Bloomby Hills as well. They got the majority of their games at Ron Holland Field. Is that Field. the crossover? That's the crossover. At Lake Orion. No, at North uh, Farmington. Oh, I'll get him at home. Yeah. So okay. if you're North Farmington, you got a tough schedule. If you win at least five of those games, I think you're a playoff team. Now, what hurt North last year was that loss to Rochester. I think that's what hurt North last year. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. No, but agree. there's a lot of questions with North Farmington this year. I'm curious to see how Coach John Hurston's team is going to be this year. I'm really curious to see what happens there. there. Um, <laughs> and now let's look at a team that I'm curious to see. The Troy Colts. <laughs> the Troy Colts. I mean, like. Any faith in sustained success? Not with watching <laughs> that regional, that first round game against Chippewa Valley. I mean, where they were just absolutely embarrassed. 
Um, well, we kind of saw, saw it coming. coming. Yeah, we saw it coming. Right. I mean, I but, mean, they but played. So- they were undefeated hanging the Bloopy Hills game, and then they lost that one as a competitive game. They survived Berkeley, and then, and then that game against Chippewa Valley. You kind of saw the writing on the wall in that game. I mean. But they had a great year. You cannot take it away from them. No, you can't take it away from them. I but mean, we've seen Troy teams have rough years. They've had great years in the 90s, and then they well, I mean, the that's 30-some years. years, right? So yeah. it's, yeah. Um, but, I mean, in the last couple of years, rough. Yeah, very but, rough. And to see them have success, awesome. They had Darius Whiteside back. Um, they got Jaden Peacock in the corner at – in defensive secondary, yes. Um, they got Nolan Block at um quarterback. Um, there's some pieces with Troy. There is some pieces with them. The schedule, I'm a little, <laughs> um, but the, if it goes by a strength, the schedule component, I mean, like that could hurt them. But I think with Troy, you know, people look at them and say, okay, can they sustain success? That's the mm-hmm. big question. So uh, the schedule you say is not, not that the, difficult. Not that difficult. So they must win games. They gotta there, win games. There's, yeah. I mean, and we've seen teams that had. Uh, yeah, it's not like moder- it's moder- not like North schedule. Who's no, vicious. no, no. Mm-hmm. Like moderately tough schedules. They win. You know, they they put up a good fight. Some teams and don't get in. No. Yeah. Right? And, so this is. And when you look at the playoff system, if you win at least seven games, you can still miss the playoffs. Yes, which is. Mm-hmm. So, I'm, sh- I'm shaking my head. Troy, Everybody on video can Troy's see. Troy's probably in that same. Shaking my head. Troy's the same boat right now. Yeah. I think Troy's in that same boat. Now I'm high on Athens this year. I mean, like, yes, they got a new coach in Tom Cook taking over. I mean, I'm really high on Anthony Asher, their running back. I'm really high on him. I think he's gonna have a good year. They got to find a quarterback. Um, now I'm curious to see how they adjust the Cook system. Compared to Billy Keenis, who's now at Holly, you know, so yeah, I mean, like when I look at Holly, you know, I think Holly's gonna be okay this year. I really do. Um, I think with Athens, I think they're. I'm high on Athens this year. I I really think they could surprise some folks. Um, I think they're a team that could really watch for. I mean, so here's <laughs> see what happens. There. And yeah. then there's Sea Home. I mean, yeah. So Sea Home, we usually see strong teams. Ron Devere. Yes. Ron Navier. Where are they right Last now? Last year, they went one and eight. Yes. Very well. They didn't. They have a very young team last year. Very young. This year, supposed to be better. Hopefully, being in in the blue will help them out. Hopefully, I think I think we're gonna see them in a lot more competitive games this year. I think Coach Jim D. Wall is gonna have a good year. I really do. I mean. You know, you're playing some good teams there. Yeah. Um, curious to see where this team's going to be. Um, they got a quarterback in Colton Kinney, really high on. What year? Uh, he is going to be, I think, a junior. Okay. Um, really high on him. I think that he's. I think, but the key for me is in a veer, you have to have good running, rushing attack, and you got that good um line play. I think Seaholm has that, but it's going to come down to depth. If it comes down to a depth game. You know, this is where it could get real interesting for Seaholm. And I think playing a time possession game like what Seaholm does. Yes. Um, very curious to see where. They have to move the ball. Yes, they got to move the ball. <laughs> if you're not moving the ball, there's no time possession game. Right. You know what I mean? And if you're on defense, a lot of times you're going to get burned. You know what I mean? That's really what it is. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so... you, you don't want the other team to have any offensive attack. Mm-hmm. And then let's go to the gold division. So the new gold division. So this yep. is in, this is pretty exciting um, mm-hmm. to see when you gave me that information and laid it out. And again, it's another um, lineup of teams yep. that I think is really good. It we're, we're not seeing anything heavy, you know, top heavy, yep. and you know, like let's say two top heavy teams, and right. then and then everybody, you know, everybody yeah. else. This look, is an interesting stack of teams. I like this division. I mean. I think Avondale is going to be better, even though I'm not sure how they made the playoffs last year. Well, stunner. Well, yeah, in Division Three, obviously <laughs> being in that division really helped them out. Yeah, but but when you look at a team that should be favored in this division, Berkeley stands out. 
And I had Coach Sean Shields in this podcast a couple weeks ago. And they're, they got, their line is going to be the strength of this team. They got a solid rushing attack. Quarterback's the big question mark for them. And, but they got, and wide receiver as well. So if you're Coach Sean Shields, you know, you got the offensive pieces. Yeah. Defense and defense is a big question mark for me. So when I look at Berkeley, I, th- there's no reason why I could see this team not win eight games. Mm. They got Milan, who's an interesting match for them. Really? They can open up with Milan. You know what I mean? Milan's a pretty good team. They're solid. They're okay. Yeah. I mean, back on, I mean, like, I know um a lot of um SEC teams are playing um as well. You got it's the landing Lincoln's playing Farmington. That should be an interesting really? game. Yeah, it's gonna be very SEC good. coming out uh, coming out this way. Farmington eh? goes to, to they're um, going there. Ipsy. Oh no, I take that back. Yeah, Ipsy comes to Farmington. Which uh, Ipsy Lincoln? Ipsy Lincoln. Yep. Ipsy the rail Lincoln. splitters. The rail splitters. Yep. But Milan's an interesting game for Berkeley. I think that's gonna be interesting. Mm. I still remember that game last year for Berkeley when they knocked off the Lone and Clarenceville. Yeah. And they were undefeated mm-hmm. at that time. I said. That was probably one of the biggest <laughs> wins I think of Coach Sean Shields' coaching tenure. Yeah, it, biggest that, wins was beating Clarence. That Bay. was a that was an awesome win, a good feel, especially for fans of the OAA. I mean, mm-hmm. that was a that was a big win. It was a ton of fun to see, mm-hmm. and for that program, you know, to see that W, it's like yeah, right. You know, that's when you're, you're like going, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and I'm saying to myself, okay, I think Berkeley can sustain the success. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Even though the numbers are low there, are a little bit low, I think they have they have the right pieces in place. They have the coaching staff in place. Absolutely. They have the Pitts, they have the Berkeley Steelers Youth Football League down there in place. I mean, like, I think that they are in a great position of long term success. I think Berkeley could be a very good team. Yeah. Very good program for years to come. I, I'm very high on this team. Um, Avondale, obviously we talked about them. I mean, like, they got athletes, we know that. I mean, they're going to yes. go with Jake Herzog, a quarterback. Um, curious to see how Coach Corey Bell's team goes, you know what I mean, this year. Yeah, it's 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 one of those head scratchers, you know. Mm-hmm. You're trying to you're trying to figure them out. It, it's still that – it's like a fog. You know, you're trying to see through the fog, trying to figure out what, what we're looking at here. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you go, oh, man, this, this team on paper should be – very competitive. They'll be in the mix. They should be in the and mix. in the mix. But then you see them, they flip the script and you go, whoa, what happened? So, mm-hmm. yeah, I think it's. They, I think if, if, if Corey, if Coach Bell could at least could change that, start getting them trending upward, you know what I mean? Instead of being like around 500 and all that. I mean, like they've been, you know, and last year they got in the postseason with the Sapar with an under 500 record. Yes. Because of their schedule in the Blue Division. Yeah, it was tough. And. But do, when do I look, think with the alignment with the new gold, mm-hmm. that that will help them out. It could help them out. You know what I mean? It could help them. I mean, I think they'll win some games for sure. But I'm curious to see. Avondale's the one I'm really watching carefully. Yeah. Um, and then there's Royal Oak. Coach Justin Truitt takes <laughs> over. Um, they named their captains already. Wow. Um, Makai Jenkins, um, um, running back, going to CMU next year. And then there's Ellie Finch. Um, offensive, defensive lineman, um, play, I mean, like, leading the lines. So when you look at Royal Oak, the thing I have with them is historically, historical accuracy's not been good. <laughs> um, they've made the playoffs three times since 2006. Um, the schedule's interesting. Um, so, and I know there's a lot of optimism for Royal Oak. But when I look at this team, and yes, they got Hudson Settle quarterback, but here's the question I have. Can Royal Oak develop pass catchers? That is the big question. Yes, they lost Jesse Hosington last year, but he was a tight end. Yeah. If they could develop true deep threats at wide receiver, I think this they could go somewhere. And if they can improve that defense. And we know uh, that teams that um, the one-dimensional, if you're one-dimensional, yeah, uh, you know, you could be – Loaded with talent, but if you can't throw the ball and keep those defenses honest, that's what I'm concerned trouble. with. That's what I'm concerned with Berkeley and Royal Oak because both those teams are similar type in nature. Run the ball, power, rely a line in your line. Yep. 
I could trust Berkeley's line. I don't know <laughs> if I could trust Royal Oak's line. Yes. Um, but Royal Oak, you know, obviously when you look at those type of players, especially when you have a when you look at Royal Oak, I think they could be fine this year. I, I if they if things go right. I mean, if things go right. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. And then there's Ferndale. Ferndale last few years, twenty two and eight. Um, but last few years haven't been that good. I mean, like now when you look at Coach Eric Royal's team, they sh- they have Tom Wanek coming back at quarterback. Uh, I got, I got some concerns probably up front, even though they're going to be strong up front, they should be strong up front. But when I look at the game last year, that really gave me head scratchers with Royal Oak <laughs> and Ferndale last year. I remember that because on Twitter. I said last year Royal Oak was going to go 0-9. And, <laughs> and when they beat Ferndale, my Twitter oh, feed sick. lit up. <laughs> it did. It lit up. You it know what sh- I mean? It should have. Hey, man. And I had to make an apology on air. <laughs> I had to. The fans. But that's but that's great. The fans it, are involved. They're having fun. I mean, that's why – this is taking place. Yes. Right? You got you got a discussion going. Mm-hmm. You got them riled up. And, boy, did you hear it. <laughs> yeah. You remember that. Yes. You remember I heard it. It was so and... funny. I go, uh, uh, give it to him again, please. <laughs> I, I, got Royal, I don't have Royal Oak. I don't have Royal Oak going no, no, nine no, this year. I don't you have know, them going nine. Sh- you sure? I haven't seen the. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I mean, like, I think Royal Oak's going to be a. I think when I look at Royal Oak right now, that schedule, you know, maybe two wins, maybe three wins. I'm looking at that schedule. I mean, the, Coach Truett's got a challenge ahead of him. Yeah. I mean, taking over for Coach Ray McMahon, building that program back, yeah. program strength, youth levels. Um, same, but there's a lot of optimism around there at Royal yeah. Oak. There's a lot of optimism. Same conversations. It's like. You got a new guy at the helm. What's it going to look like? What's it going to feel like? How are the kids going to respond? Mm -hmm. You know, and especially if the teams that are, you know, with numbers coming in and you're you're really, they're working their tails off to Mm -hmm. keep these programs up and running. And then you're trying to find success. Right. Right. They're in the same boat. That's not easy to do. It is not. So kudos to those guys. I mean, the coaches that are dedicated to these kids is, you know, Hats off. To and we forgot. Well, we got one more team. Got yeah, let's Pontiac. Go. You know what I mean? You know. Is, he, are they going to break out this year? Are we going to see I think they can something? win three games this year with that schedule. Okay. Here's why. I think Detroit Osborne they get. Mount Clemens they get. And Garden City they get. Okay. I think they could beat those three teams. And here's why. You have a running back in Dave Van Hall. They put up 40 points last year against Stockbridge which is the most Pontiac has scored since against West Bloomfield in 2011 when they put up 66. Yeah. And I think they, this team, I've got high optimism for them because here's why. You have a quarterback. You have a running game. You have a running game. All they need to do is build that program. Build a JV program. Mm-hmm. Build a freshman program. You know, keep I know I've heard the talk about Purple Wall. Keep the Purple Wall in Pontiac, you know? Yeah. I mean, like... The facilities I, are there. The facilities is there. You just open up a new stadium. Yes. You just... I mean, like, that's going to create wonders. I still remember talking to Coach Shields about that game and Coach Albright about playing at Pontiac last year. How, you know, basically... I remember when that field opened up when you yeah. had the sea of red for Pontiac Northern. The sea of orange for Pontiac Central. Awesome. And then the purple for Pontiac, the Pontiac Phoenix. I mean, like, awesome. it was an awesome experience. Wasn't it, though? Yes. I mean, it's one of those hair mm-hmm. standing up on, It, it you has know. to make you cry. You know it, what I mean? It, it because, does. Like, it's, you know, yeah. for the fact that this, that, for the fact that Pontiac's had to play all their, most of their games, almost all their games at Wisner. Yes. You know, and now you open that fa- that stadium up, you know, that new stadium. And I you mean, And you great. start building an identity. Mm-hmm. Right. It's a, it's a singular place. It's close to the school. The students can attend. You can get the bodies in there and get that fan base going and get them rallied around those kids. And that's when you begin to get a culture of support. And, um, you know, you get those 
just having people in the stands, they can. It's right there at the school. It's it's it. You can't understate uh, how important it is to have that new stadium right there on campus that the community can just walk to. You can go to the you know to get the kids involved, and um, it, we are you and I and others are huge Pontiac fans. We want that. Not moniker the phoenix to be true right mm-hmm. we want them to come back well the fact that this it's has been a program that is that is just, just been hanging, hanging on by hanging on by a thread having to go through so much yes. i mean they went through they've went through coach Co- changes they every went through year yeah oh and nine records they've went through i mean like the fact is you know then last year it kind of felt some hints i mean like that some of it was starting to turn around I mean, Davion Hall, he's going to be a star player for them. <laughs> yes, he we is. know what he can do on the basketball court. Yeah. You know what he's going to do on the football field. Yes. I remember, I remember his five touchdown game last year against Stockbridge where yeah. he went absolutely nuts. Bonkers. I mean, like, and then you look at, you got the quarterback there at Pontiac. I think he's going to have a great year. If and they got the right coach here in Ken Wade, who I think could turn this thing around. Mm-hmm. I mean, you look at Pontiac, I think this team, and there's a reason why I'm high on this team. Could they win more than three games? Absolutely. I mean, like, I think it's, I think, you know. How big is, would that be? That would be huge for them because any type of game, if they can win more than three games, you know what I mean? If they win three games, it's like an accomplishment. Huge. You know, it's, I mean, I think for Pontiac football, I think for them this year, if they can win three games, because I don't trust Garden City. I've seen Garden City play against, when I saw him play against Burke a couple years ago, it was not a fun sight. <laughs> um, Detroit Osborne, they can win that game. I think they can win that one. Wow. Okay. And then Mount Clements, I think they can win that game as well against Mount Clements. I, I think Pontiac can. There's no doubt in my mind. I think they can win three games. We're at 52, by the way. Really? Yeah, wow. I know it's going by quick. So when you look at your early, so no OAA dubs. No, no OAA dubs right now, but they could. You know, they could. I mean, like, you know, they could get no OA dubs right now for them. But I think they could. They'll be in, they'll be in some games. Um, when you look at everybody in the league, you know, from the gold division, um, do you have, like, an early favorite? Jeez. I, the, the way everything is laid out, and like we said, you know, with the, the divisions being so balanced, mm-hmm. it's, it's tough. It's tough. A, a team I traditionally pick, let's say a Clarkston, go, yeah, okay, prove me wrong. Or West Bloomfield, I would say. West Bloomfield has to be the favorite in the red. They're cream of the crop, right? right. I mean, they have to be the favorite in the red because of who they got back. Yes. Um, you look at Adams, and I'm like, can they repeat what they did? I mean, they built up to what they did. Last they, year, they were in the white. You know I, yeah, I mean? so now they are. In the red. Yeah, so. What does that mean, right? So things have, so many things have changed. It's it's difficult to me. I I'm not high on picking a favorite at this time because everything is shuffled and changed, and it's it, this is a new look OAA, mm-hmm. right? Well, um, obviously Harper Woods coming in. Well, the Harper Woods coming in, but you have now they're Division Two for playoffs. Yeah, did you want to touch on that? Have we, you talked about well, that before? We I mean, like, if we you did, did already, talk about it a okay, couple weeks ago. Then we but don't need to. Harper Woods being in D2 for playoffs, that's going to be interesting. Yes. You have, could they? Is play? that an advantage, or do you think that's a problem? I think it uh, could be a disadvantage a, a little bit because, you know, they haven't played against D2 teams. I mean, like, um, you know, like in the postseason. Mm. I mean, the realization playing Warren D. Of South is very real for them. Yes. And I think that's a possibility there. I mean, in basketball, you know, when you look at basketball, I mean, like, they're in Division One for playoffs. I mean, like, they're in a district with Gold Growth Point yeah. um, and St. Clair Shores Lakeview. Yeah. Um, that's not going to be easy, particularly on the girls' side, especially. Yes. Um, so that's going to be something to keep an eye on. But, but I, I, to- I'm just really excited. Um, you know, last year we're, uh, we're excited because we're coming off the pandemic year mm-hmm. and getting back to normal. That was the discussion. It seemed now we're getting to hey, this we're back. This is I'm excited to watch the blue division this year. Are you? Here's why: there's so much parity in the division. Yes, anybody can win that division. I mean, Seahome with the Veer, 
North Farmington. Do you think everybody's going to beat coaching. everybody? I think they will. I mean, I think when you look at you look at Farmington's got a lot of experience coming back. North Farmington with the coaching. Yeah, yeah. Home with the fear. Troy getting in the playoffs last year. Are they for real or not? Can and they sustain? Troy Athens, Troy Athens. I think the team. I'm. I think they're they're a sleeper in that division. You know, okay. so I think the blue division is probably going to be the most competitive division. Um, and then you look at uh, and then you look at the the um out of the, out of all four divisions, I think the blue it has the biggest has the best chance of being the most competitive. Most competitive and the big old question mark. Yep, big old question mark. Yep. See that? See, and that's what makes it fun. Mm-hmm. And uh, when you showed me that list and we were chatting about it, yeah, I completely agree with you on that. It, mm-hmm. that that's a division you can sit back and go every week. You go, what's happening in blue? Yep. Right. And sometimes we favor the red just because it's the heavyweights and something like that. You know, uh, as far as mm-hmm. going in the playoffs and going deep, but I think the regular season is going to be a ton of fun to watch, especially in that the head to head. I think the, the blue, blue will be the fun. Yeah. I think the blue will be the most and fun. the gold, the new gold division. I think there's some parity in that division. I mean, yeah. obviously, you know, Berkeley lost a lot of talent. Avondale will be up there. Um, Royal Oak, I'm curious to see how Coach Justin Truett handles that program. Mm-hmm. Can Eric Royal and Fernando bounce back? Big question there. And can Pontiac? You know, Pontiac yeah. can they? Show some, show some competitiveness against the OE competition. And something, too, uh, for me that I always like is like having these new coaches coming in and taking over. Some familiar faces, some mm-hmm. brand new faces, right? And just, uh, just watching to see how they handle what's happening, right? Yeah. Um, hires inside, in-house, outside, you know, just to see how that goes. And mm-hmm. then even, like, the second-year coaches, like, because then they start molding their teams into their own likeness, their own right? Likeness, what they yeah. really want to do. Mm-hmm. And so the second year, first year coaches, I, that, that's something that I always like to mm-hmm. to watch. And it always, it, it's fun to uh, take a peek at. Yep. And then when you look at the white division, obviously, you know, yeah. I, I, I absolutely don't trust a <laughs> I, I can't trust him. You know? Speak your mind, Sammy. I don't, I absolutely can't trust him. Just, especially defensively. You know what I mean? I can't trust him defensively. Can Harper Woods main, can Harper Woods do well in the first year? Yeah. Can Groves and Oak Park have bounce back years? Can Rochester break can, the city curse? Can, can they maintain? Because yeah. that you we were that was a surprise. Mm-hmm. Rochester last year. Yeah. And can they can they maintain? Can they maintain? And then the red storylines, obviously. How would Justin Pitta do at Clarkston? Yeah. Um New Era at can, Clarkston. Can Adams overcome their loss up front? Um, can, um, new coach Lake Orion, can, how, will, <laughs> how will Luke, how will Lake Orion do with, under coach Chris Bell? How will, um, Oxford do this year? And then how will West, will West Bloomfield overcome their discipline, um, mindset? Can they overcome? Their, Are they, it, it, will they mature? Will they mature? That's big. That's, and you have to think, yeah, I think they'll mature. I hope. I we'll think see so. what happens. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Absolutely. Yep, so that's the storylines hanging the season. Whole bunch of them, Sammy. Yep. Um, thank you for Ian for coming. Hey. I mean, like, you know, I know you're going on yeah. vacation. Yeah, I'll next. see you in a couple weeks. See you in a couple and weeks. And yep. we'll be in the home stretch for the OA preview show mm-hmm. and all that good stuff. Next week we'll have Coach Nick Merlo calling in next week here talking to Sony Creek football and also and also we have a lot to talk about this week for next week. So all right yeah. everybody, we're gonna stay stay strong. God bless everybody and see you on next week, everybody. Take care and see you soon. Thanks, Sam. Oh, and now it's produced by Sammy Terramune. The views on this show are his and mine alone. If you'd like to make a podcast, give Owen TV a call at 248-393-1060. We are now enrolling one-on-one courses. Give us a call. We'll see you next week. See ya. See ya.